From prison to photography, CEO David L. Pittman Jr., 46, has embodied change, transformation, and reform. David enjoys speaking to and men mentoring young Black men. He is adamant about giving back to his community. He is a fighter for the underdog. David is the father of six beautiful, intelligent children and the grandfather of two handsome grandsons. David believes faith without works is dead. Quitting is not an option and anything a person conceives, if he, she truly believes it, that person can surely obtain it, achieve it. Mr. Pittman currently owns and operates DP Photography LLC located in Biloxi, Mississippi, in the St. Martin, Mississippi area and resides in Gautier, Mississippi. We welcome my faithful friend, awesome marketeer and media giant, David L. Pittman Jr. How you doing today, sir? Man, hold up. I'm doing real good. What about you? I'm, I'm great. And I keep reiterating faithful friend sure. because you have certainly um, been an, a true friend to me, always marketing me, always uh, consulting with me, always mentioning me to different customers. And I value that from the bottom of my heart, but not just because of that, because you care so much about the community. You care so much about different organizations and reaching out to young black men and snatching them out of this vicious cycle that we can sometimes find our young men involved in. So I'm always thoughtful concerning you, concerning that. So you have an incredible story, Mr. Pittman. Um, many of redemptive qualities in it. Prison is a hard place. And many who go into prison find it difficult to come out and to stay out. Right. Whether it's due to any type of, um, maybe it's due to the crime they committed. That's uh, right the inability to find employment because of a record. And some of them began to lie on their applications simply because yep. they found it difficult to find employment. And that raises the ethical issue. And it puts them back in that cycle of distrust. And they find themselves losing that job that they had lied about to obtain. And then they right. become this vicious cycle trying to Find some way to bring food, put food on the table, put money in the pockets, and then they sometimes and oftentimes go back to, to the streets and back into that system like a hamster wheel. Right. But your story is unique um, in the sense that you started taking pictures in prison. And that sparked a passion deep inside of you. And like you do with anything that I've seen you touch your hands, to or put your hands to, you like to do things with the spirit of excellence. So inside that prison, God placed this passion in you and it would manifest. And now we see one of the most sought out photographers along the Mississippi Gulf Coast and beyond the Mississippi Gulf Coast because I've seen many people come to you for contract, corporate contract from coast to coast. Now, tell us your journey, David. Um, first off, I just want to thank God for allowing me to live another day and for giving me another opportunity uh, to surrender my will to him. It's him and him alone that I serve and him and him alone that I trust. And I would just want to thank you for allowing me to be on your platform, Katrina. And I want to thank everybody uh, for tuning in. Um, the thing, my, my story is it's, 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 it's big, you know. As most people have stories, my story is uh, it's intertwined with many uh, different situations and many different people. Um, and then I just had to correct you. I, I actually was were t was taking pictures before I entered prison. The okay. thing, the, okay. but the thing about it was, while I was in prison, um, they selected me to take pictures of the uh, the inmates and their families in one of the prisons I was in doing a visitation. Mm -hmm. And um, lo and behold, you know, 
when, when I got out of prison, you know, a few years later, I would actually, you know, be doing this uh, for a living. Um, my uh, journey as a as, as a photographer uh, started maybe probably about in 2016 as a professional photographer or, or trying to, you know, swim to that pinnacle of being a, where I am today. And I pray to God that I'll be able to go further. And um, it was basically out of a necessity to make money because as you mentioned, you know, I am a felon and uh, I would try to get jobs. And anytime that I would list, you know, that I was a felon on an application, you know, I would automatically be denied. They wouldn't even call me. And uh, if I didn't put it on the application, eventually they would find out that I was a felon and they would end up uh, terminating my employment. So I had to do something for myself in order to be able to feed myself. It was either that or be forced back to a life of, uh, of crime, which I, you know, came very close to going back into because uh, if you don't have resources and um, you don't have connections, especially in Mississippi, you can do things that uh, you probably don't want to do in order to uh, feed yourself. So it's only by the grace of God that God, you know, he uh, he made me patient and he placed many different people in my life, you know, during that time period and even now that was willing to help me, even though they didn't have much, they were willing to help me. And uh, there was a brother, his name was uh, Shahid Ali, him and another brother, my barber, uh, Tony, Tony Wallace, they put money together and they bought me, uh, they purchased my first camera for me. And uh, Tony, he always tells me, you know, when I go get his head back, when we talk about this, he said, man, I remember when we all went to that Walmart to get that camera. And he was like, man, I sure hope this worked for this brother, you know, because I mean, people just don't have and they give, you know, out of the kindness of their heart. And they want to see that you, you know, move to the next level. Right. And uh, I, pr I promised those brothers, you know, that I was going to do, you know, the best that I could and, you know, try to climb that uh, that mountain. And um, so, you know, I, I did that for a few years and I had a faithful uh, follower, a supporter who uh, is not African-American. But I just want to say that she was a Jewish a person. She probably doesn't want to be mentioned. So I'm not going to mention her by name. She hired me for a few jobs even though she could have went and paid anybody else to do the job, you know, top notch. And uh, eventually she ended up sponsoring me for this business that I have uh, right now. That, that's the short, that's the short form of the story. And, you know, the, the thing that you and I were talking about uh, before I, you know, before we jumped online was faith without works is dead. Yes. See that, you know, when Tony and Shahid and then my Jewish friend, when they reached out to help me, you know, too many people don't want to help someone that has been in my position. Right. So that's a miracle in and of itself. Yes. I think that they were willing to help me, you know, because they had love in their heart, but also because I had demonstrated, you know, not only did I have, oh, I, I believe uh, I, I can do this, but I actually got up and I, you know, made it happen. I did the work. Mm -hmm. So they were willing to uh, take that chance or that risk and invest in me. And uh, I just thank God for them and for others. It's you yourself, you know, the Martins. It's, it's just so many people that I can name that have helped me. And it just reminds me of what Tyler Perry said. He said, hey, you got to get up and make it happen because your dreams might be tied to someone else's dreams. Yeah. And this is how you know, we as human beings, you know, when Jesus, I don't mean to get religious or anything, but when. No, this is a faith based program. Right. Yeah. right. Go good. Ahead. OK, good. So when Jesus, you know, when he set out on his mission, you know, everybody that he helped in some way or one way or another, their lives were tied to other people. And they went back and helped other people. And that that's our duty. That's our job, you know. No one should be um, without, you know, in this world, this plentiful world that we live in, there should be, everyone should be given, 
You know, the Bible talks about that. The Bible says that we are a right. community. Um, you know, right. there's long rangers in the gospel. Um, right. You know, even Jesus had twelve disciples, and that shows right. community. That shows, you know, we know everybody likes to talk about Judas being the betrayal, but he even right. him for purpose. Right. Um, so everything has its purpose, purpose in place. Go ahead and continue. I didn't mean to interrupt, but no. I thought it was a good segue yeah, right. into the community. Right. Yeah. You know, every everybody has a purpose, and it's up to us to tap in mm -hmm. to ourselves. You know, they say that you know the best treasures are not obvious. Obviously, on they're not on top of the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to dig. You know, like a diamond. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't find there's some diamonds that are found on top of the ground, you know, from uh, wear and tear on the earth. But the best diamonds, yeah. right, of value, they're found buried deep. You know, I remember looking at this National Geographic and uh, how one corporation went to Africa and they just it's just like a big canyon that they dug so deep and they were shafting out diamonds. You know, that had formed over years and it takes pressure to form diamonds. It takes time. It takes heat. And it's the same thing with the human being. The best of us is buried on the inside of us, but it's up to us to dig within ourselves and find that treasure and to cultivate it and to manifest it and to make it into something great and to be able to share it with others. You know, the graveyard is full of people that never found them those treasures, you know, and may God bless them and forgive them of their sins and have mercy upon them. But I don't want to be one of those individuals that go to the grave without having fulfilled my purpose in life, without having discovered, you know, my talents and the gifts that God has, has placed in me. So you already have mentioned about faith is not work. Faith without works is dead. And that is scripturally based. It is. The right. That's right. Well, one thing I personally know, many things I personally know about you, you aren't just picking up a camera, providing people with any old product. You put in effort. You, back to what you were saying, you put in the work. You put in the study. You put in the research. You put in going to the workshops. You constantly and consistently keep fine-tuning your profession because you want to produce a great customer service, a great product, great customer engagement. You're awesome at marketing. And so your bio even talks about the faith without works is dead. So actually you right. could speak to your prayers. Sometimes, right. many times, especially with the generation now, that microwave mm -hmm. generation, that's part of my generation. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, the iPhone and the iCloud, right. and get it quickly. So sometimes, although they're talented, gifted, they don't take the time to hone those skills and put in the work. Right. Share with us basically the tenacity and the work behind, which you've already alluded to, of what makes your profession great, what you do, the products that you put out great. Well, that's a very good question. And uh, when I when I think about, you know, what makes it great is, you know, I was I, I was I was born in poverty. And, uh, you know, my mom, she worked. May God bless her soul. We're in a mercy and peace. She worked seven days a week. Wow. They didn't they didn't want to give her um, uh, health benefits. So they kept her under 32 hours, but they spread her hours out over a seven day period of time. So she didn't have much. It's back when they're doing the Reagan administration, when they were paying like three dollars and eighty six per hour, eighty six cents per hour. So in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s, crack cocaine was uh, spread throughout the black community. Mm -hmm. And it was a bad thing, but it was from that that I learned how to hustle and how to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to Too Short and Master P mm -hmm. and other uh, rappers who made a name for themselves, not through the big record companies, but they got out there and they sold tapes out of the trunk of their vehicles. And now they're 
multimillionaires because they were willing to put the work in. Mm -hmm. You know, they were willing to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what sets me apart from other photographers. Not that I think that I'm better than another photographer, but I know that in order for me to be able to put out a good product, I have to put in the work and I have to be willing sometimes to take a punch here and there to even take a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, so when someone comes to me for a, a photo shoot or a video or whatever the case may be, to the best of my ability, I try to satisfy that client to the best of my ability. T to me, I feel guilty if I give you an image. And you know how those sisters, they wear the wigs mm -hmm. and then you see all the frizz coming off the wig. I can't give you no image like that. Uh, there's a lot of veteran photographers that have been in the game for a minute that do a lot of these. They got the contracts with the schools and they just give these uh, these parents any kind of pictures and they charge them outrageous amounts of money for very little or no work at all. I can't do that because I feel guilty. Even when I sold crack, I did not like to sell an inferior product. When I had, I don't, I don't mean to, you know, bring this up in a, in, a, in a negative way, but it's just my mindset. When I sold crack, and the person that cooked up the crack for me, I didn't want the crack that the dope fiends wasn't gonna like. I wanted them to make me some crack that the dope fiends was gonna take a hit, and they was gonna be addicted and hooked. So it's the same thing with this photography game that I'm in, or you know, whatever product or service that I'm offering to the people. That's the way I view it. I want to give them the best. Uh, product possible. Some people say, uh, can I get an image? Can you give me all my images back uh, tomorrow? No, I can't do that. You know, that might, Joe Blow up the street might do that because he's not going to put any, any work into your uh, into your images. And then you get those images back and they look crazy. But I'm going to take my time and I'm going to put work into it because I want you to be happy. I want you to be pleased with them. And especially if it's images of your children, I want your children to be able to look at those images 30 years from now and their jaw just drop. They entranced by those images. I want to be able to deliver the best product possible because I like to make people smile. I like to make people happy. I like to see their expression. You know, when they get those images back, when they come pick up those prints and they just, they're amazed. You know, when they watch a video, I watch a woman cry in my studio when I made a video for her son, who's a, a, a wonderful basketball player. She cried when she, tears were coming down her face. And, you know, the joy that gave me, that gave me a complete joy because she was satisfied. And that's what moves me. That's what motivates me to uh, help people in a way that will make them happy because you never know what a person is going through. And you could do you could say something or do something that could change the whole atmosphere of a person's mindset and move that person toward another direction. I'll never forget that was brothers that I was locked up with. That I, you know, we run across each other since I've been out. And they'll tell me, man, I really appreciate you helping me. Are you telling me what you told me while we, while we were in there? Because look at me now, I'm doing good. And the only thing I can do is just thank God for blessing me with the opportunity to just be able to help somebody to the best of my ability. So that's what motivates me and drives me. I often call you the voice and vision for second for a second shot because you have the vision. You, you've you written the vision down and you've made it plain. Um, and I, of course, coined the second shot because you take pictures. Right. We all, as Christians, as non-believers, all of us have had a second shot, two, three, four, five, six, countless shots. However, right. um, because you have such a redemptive story and we all do right because of the hard places that you've had to come through you often mentor to people especially african-american men a young black man right Share with us the work the passion and the heart that you have behind that right well um jesus he said that um you can't serve two masters you have to love one and you have to hate one. And the master that I serve is the master of good because I hate evil. Mm -hmm. 
And that is what moves me to help people in, in a way that, uh, you know, some people might say, oh, you know, people are not doing this anymore. That's like old fashioned. Who, who will reach out and just really help somebody? That, that's, that's what motivates me because you see, it's like this. If God wouldn't have helped me, then I would still be in that same predicament that I was in six or seven years ago or even 20 years ago. I might not even be doing this interview right now, Katrina. You know what I mean? Second chances is something that, or third or fourth chances even for some, is something that, that uh, you know, we have to give and extend to everybody because God, he gives us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. So we have to follow in that way and help people because some people, they just don't know. Once upon a time, I didn't know, but now I know. And even when society throws a blow at you and they don't want to give you another opportunity, then guess what? God will give you another opportunity. You just have to keep on pushing. So that's what keeps me to uh, trying to help those who are um, uh, denied that right that God given right to continue on with their lives because I've been denied. I'm still denied in a sense, but I don't give up. I just keep moving forward. Back to faith is not works without works is dead. Right. It's more than just getting the, the business license. It's more than just getting um, a camera in your hand. It's That's more right. than opening a business. How can you encourage people who have a vision and back to putting in the work and back to um, even if they feel like they're the underdog, that's basically where I'm going with this. If you feel like right. you're the underdog, the tenacity that you have not to give up. I've, I've seen some amazing things happen for you, David. I, I know about the client, the corporate client that calls you in um, to, and they specifically want you to touch their images and nobody else. Right. That is such an amazing story for someone who has been denied often, mm -hmm. but you, you hang in there and you would not fall and you would not go back to the streets and you prayed to right. God and you cried out to God and you didn't just, just because God didn't answer you immediately, you didn't just drop God like a hot potato. You right. have a relationship with him. So share, I know you got a preacher in you. Share that. Yeah. <laughs> that that hey. is that perfect moment with us. <laughs> right. So, you know, you, you mentioned that um, if, if a person feels like they're the underdog, um, you know, why, what, what should... What, you know, what steps should they take or, or, you know, what can build them up to or in order for them to make that uh, that step? Well, know this uh, and this is true. You're really not the underdog because uh, God is with you. I think it says in the New uh, Testament that the last will be first and the first will be last. So if you have been in last, if you keep on running the race, eventually you'll be first. So the thing that we uh, we have to understand is that, you know, a lot of people just want to reach that pinnacle, but they don't want to go through the pain and suffering it takes to reach that pinnacle. You know, you just don't go from point A to point Z, you know, just like that. You have to go through everything that's in between. So you have to be willing to sacrifice and you have to be willing to take risks. And you have to be willing to take punches because you're going to get punched. You're going to get punched hard. You're going to get knocked down. You might even get beat up. But guess what? All you have to do is get up and keep going. If you keep going, one day you're going to reach that goal. One day you're going to reach that plan that you uh, charted out. It's been proven. I mean, all you have to do is just Read. If you read about the great uh, 
history makers who achieve great things, mm -hmm. the story is always the same. You know, they had a passion within themselves and uh, they wanted to fulfill that passion. They didn't succumb to what other people thought they should be or what other people thought they should do. They followed what was in their heart, hearts, what God had given to them. That's what they followed. And they didn't allow anyone or anything to prevent them from following, even if they had to go broke or, or become uh, desolate or go hungry. They set out to achieve their goal like Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, just to, in order for him to read, he gave away food just to learn how to read and write. He went hungry just to learn how to read and write. And he was able to achieve that goal. You know, there are other greats that we could discuss, you know, that have done uh, great, wondrous things that affect us in this lifetime that we live now. But they didn't follow what somebody else said. Oh, well, I think you ought to do this. You know, they kept going on the path that God put them on that was in their heart. I'll never forget, you know, when I was on this, when I was on uh, this journey, there were people say, oh, he lazy. He don't want to work. Mm. Uh, he lazy. Uh, he can go get a job. But they didn't understand my predicament and my situation because they had never been in this situation. And then they didn't know what God put on the inside of me. There was one friend I had. I tried to get him to finance me. He had a lot of money. He had money from when we was dealing dope back in the day. But he wouldn't finance me doing anything legal. But instead, he wanted to finance me to do something illegal. But I wouldn't do it. He couldn't see the vision that God put in me. But it wasn't meant for him to see. It was meant for me to see. And that's where some of us get tied up is because we're too busy trying to get other people to see our vision. And they ain't meant for them to see it because God didn't give it to them. He gave it to you to fulfill. So it's that vision that God gives us. We have to take uh, time out and meditate on that vision and, and pray about that vision and ask God to give us the resources and the willpower to fulfill that vision. Ask God to give us the strength to endure those punches and the, the strength that when we get hit, that we can just get back up. You know, there's probably some people right now. Matter of fact, I know there's some people right now that are saying, oh, he ain't going to last through this coronavirus stuff. His business is going to close down. <laughs> but guess what? I'm not worried about that because, see, God got me. He gave me a vision and I'm walking in the path that he put me on. And you know what? I'm going to be the survivor like this. Is, uh, I'm a survivor. <laughs> I'm going to be a survivor. And when this is all over, I'm going to still be here. And, I, and when this is all over, it's going to be bigger and better. I'm going to be moving more toward the fullness of what God is revealing to me. So, you know, we just have to be willing to sacrifice. We have to be willing to uh, push forward. We have to be willing to put the work in, man. If you want to become an entrepreneur, this is not anything. It's just simple. You know, it's some nights when I'm in the studio three or four o'clock in the morning, just working. You know, it's some night. It's, it's many days that I, I don't only get three or four hours of sleep and I have to get back on it. But you know what? I feel good because this is what God has placed on me. This is what he has allowed me to walk into. This is what I prayed for. So, you know, after you sacrifice and you take the risk and you, you, you get punched and you get knocked down and then you are able to walk into what God has blessed you to walk into. There's no better feeling that I'm telling you. See these keys right here. Every time I take these keys and I open that door to that studio, to the studio, I feel marvelous when I walk in and I see my picture on the wall and you know I, I just feel it's just just so it's just no feeling like that when you know that God has placed you in a position that would otherwise be totally impossible you know there's no way that I could have done this without God God set different people up in my life to help me and I'm forever thankful to him and I'm forever thankful to them whether we are cool or not cool at this point, I pray that God would bless them with magnificence. I pray that God will bless them 
to walk into the fullness that he has given them also. So we just have to be willing to sacrifice, Katrina. And we have to remember that God is not a spook God where you say, God, I, I want to do this. And then all of a sudden, my son, here it is. Yeah. And it don't work like that. Right. It doesn't work like that. Jesus said faith without works is dead. You can have the faith. You can pray all you want. You can fall out on the floor and church. Ah, ah, hallelujah. You can do all that. People can come pat you and wave the fan and across your face and pat, pat the sweat off and put the Bible over you and, and throw all the olive oil on you. And, but guess what? If that light bill, if you didn't pay that light bill, I don't care how much you sing and dance and do all that stuff, your light's going to get cut off. You have to go to work. You have to make it happen. That's the universe that we live in. That's a law that God put in place. Faith without works is dead. <laughs> You've certainly given us a lot to chew on tonight, David. What's next for David? I can't, uh, I can't see you or hear you, Katrina. Okay. 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 Okay, good. Better. So, uh, uh -huh. you've given a, us a lot to chew on tonight. What's next for David L. Pittman Jr., CEO? Um, you have an amazing vision, and I don't know how much uh, you would like to share. I, I know um, you've given us insight in certain privileges. But what's next for Mr. David? I tell you what, God willing, what's next for me? DP Photography, LLC. This is just a start. As I've told many people, eventually one day I'm going to own a full-blown media corporation. And uh, down here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, like Tyler Perry has a studio out there in Georgia, I'm going to have a studio here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Yeah. What's Thank next you. for me? What's, what's next for me is that... And I, what I'm about to say, I don't want anybody to say, oh, oh, he, he racist or anything like that. I'm not racist, but I love black people. And uh, I think that uh, our situation has to be changed. And the only way that our situation is going to change is if we come in contact with resources and we learn how to operate uh, finances. And then we have control of the words of media, for instance, that uh, comes into our homes. And... Um, that, that's that's what ne that's what's next for me. I want to be able to do something and give back to my community in a major, major way. You know, a lot of the news that we get, a lot of the um, the politicians that we put in office, they really don't work for us. You know, I want to be one of the powerhouses that says, hey, you know, we got somebody we're going to get behind somebody that's really going to work for us. And when I say work for us. That's not excluding other people. But far too often when people get into office that we put into office, they don't work for us. They exclude us, but they do something for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that is not right. That's not right. So we have to be able to get ourselves together on a um, on a level that's that's higher and that's different from the uh, levels and the things that we've tried in the past, especially down here in the South. It's been business as usual. I don't want to play business as usual. I want to create and start something new. I'm not just a photographer. This is just, this is just a start of, of the mission that God put me on. This is a, a door that he allowed me to walk through that's going to set the foundation for something much bigger and something much better. I want to be able to help thousands of young black men that have uh, been incarcerated, or that are troubled, uh, maybe headed to the penitentiary. I want to be able to help them in a major way. There's a lot of poverty in order to uh, eliminate the problem of young black males going to the penitentiary. We need to create programs that will help these brothers and sisters learn trades and learn skills wherein they could uh, go get a good job with an employer or they can create their own job and work for themselves or 
work for an employer and work for themselves. That would eliminate a lot of private poverty. And that would eliminate people going to do things that they shouldn't be doing that would land them a lifetime in one of these penitentiaries, whether it be the feds or one of these states. So that's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to do. God willing. So, David, can you, can you yes, speak to me? Okay. So, um, we're about to close out, but we can't leave without your handles, without you telling us um, all of your Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, where we can find you, uh, what services you provide, because I know you do photography, but any other services that you provide, please share that information, please. Uh, DP Photography LLC is located at 15206 Lemoyne Boulevard with the address Biloxi, Mississippi 39532. But we're actually in St. Martin near D. Iverville with the Biloxi address. Um, you can find us on Google, DP Photography LLC. There's a Google website that we have. And on Facebook, it's going to be uh, at DP Photography LLC. And my business number is 228 281 nine one two six that's two two eight two eight one uh nine one uh two six and also uh i have a motivational page which is a uh, david l pittman jr and then i have a personal page that's uh david l pittman jr and i think uh my instagram is uh dave lee pitt jr i need to get on instagram more uh i'm on there every once in a while but uh, Facebook is my, my main place because that's where uh, the majority of DP Photography LLC revenue flow from is Facebook. So uh, people can reach out to me. I, I'm, I, I offer photography services. I also offer uh, videography services. I'm about to design my studio to uh, in a uh, in a position where people like when this COVID stuff stops, where they if they want to have a birthday party, you know, with about 50 people, they can rent the space and have a birthday party. I'm going to open up my studio and allow other photographers or and or videographers to rent my space. Um, I'm trying to think of some other stuff that I do, Katrina. Uh, people that uh, need help with uh, learning how to uh, run ads on Facebook or learn how to market on Facebook. I can definitely help them with that because I've become a master of that. I pick a, I generate a lot of leads for myself right through Facebook, sometimes or off times for free through organic posts. Also, uh, if someone wants to learn how to uh, edit their own videos, I can direct you toward the proper uh, software that you can get, a good starter software, and I can teach you how to use that software. Awesome. And for all those, yeah, that's, that's awesome. And for all those pastors who, um, you know, church, they, they're going to be open up to churches soon, that's good. But I did a, a video for a, a pastor recently. Uh, two videos and on at least one of the videos, he got like a thousand views. Now it's good to go to church and you reach that church audience. But just imagine if you could reach a church audience and you have a nice professional video cut for you every week that you can post. And then you can reach people outside of that church audience as well to build up uh, the church following and to win people for the cause of, of Christ. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, those are the surfaces that I offer. And uh, like I said, this is going to get bigger and better. And uh, if you need my services, I travel to any uh, state on the continental U.S. as well as uh, the, the territories, uh, Puerto Rico and the other U.S. territory. Um, all you have to do is call me. And uh, if you're willing to pay that money, I'm willing to make it happen. Definitely. Uh, you mentioned your motivational page. Um, right. So you also, I, I want to make sure people know this. You also preach, mentor. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, and you inspire. So um, what are your audiences? Share all of that information. Okay, yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, with the with the mentoring you know, right before this COVID-19 stuff, I had uh, planned a uh, an event, uh, a, a stay out of a prison event. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were quite a few people that were interested in coming that was going to come. And then it wasn't only going to be just me. There was a panel of uh, brothers, mostly whom I was either in the streets with or we were all incarcerated and they all successful. I'm talking about out here running their own business. Not not no bull jive stuff. They doing good, real good. 
traveling around the United States, making money. They're doing real good. And uh, we had planned to have an event right here in my studio, but the COVID-19 stuff happened. So we had to cancel it. So God willing, when this is over, we're going to uh, we're going to have that event. And I've been talking to people that haven't been to prison that, you know, that trust me and they love me and I trust and love them. Uh, health professionals uh, and, and others with uh, uh, 5013C nonprofit organizations. And we're supposed to collaborate and get together and have some type of event where uh, our people is catered to black people. But anybody can come out because the condition of our people. Uh, we're going to be talking about health. We're going to have uh, symposiums on health, uh, uh, finance, finances, uh, how to obtain certain uh, resources, um, uh, information that uh, parents can take into their own uh, atmosphere on things they can do to try to prevent their children from going down that, uh, that wrong path, as well as uh, teaching uh, the youth uh, politics. And, uh, you know, things that we should look for, you know, when we when we vote for certain people mm-hmm. uh, and, and if they don't do what we want them to do, what we need them to do. We we get them out of there and, and don't vote them back in another term. As, as also, uh, I talk with the uh, school professionals also that, you know, work up in the, uh, the district and administration offices. You know, they're willing to come out and speak to the parents about uh, the things that you should be looking for. You know, as far as your uh, children attending school and things that you can do that you can't just put the whole responsibility and burden on the teachers. You have to be willing to do something yourself. So it's just a whole a whole a range and whole uh, scope of things that, you know, that we're going to be doing. And because uh, I just I really don't like talking, but sometimes that's the only thing I can do because I personally don't have the resources to do some of the bigger and better things that I would like to do. But as, as a collective if we come together and pool our resources, we can make things happen. You know, just like Jesus, you know, Jesus with all the power that he had, you know, he just didn't go around by himself. What did he do? Had a community disciple. Right. He, he went and got a team. Mm-hmm. And when and when he got his team, they went and made something happen. So yeah. we have to yeah. think on that same level. You know, that's a, that's a big problem with black people, you know, and I'm black and I do it. You know, we think too much as individuals. You know, we don't think as far as, oh, that's Katrina. Let me let me call Katrina. We do this photo shoot together. You know, you're not thinking about Katrina. You just want to do the photo shoot and shoot a person without makeup. And you know they need makeup, you know. So. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. We just have to unite, you know, across the board. And I'm not saying that other people can't help us. Other people can help us. But, you know, we know our situation better than anybody else. And we have to start dictating you know, what we're going to do. We can't allow outside forces to come in and dictate what we need to do to change our own lives because we've tried all that. And guess what? We're still in this same predicament. You know, you don't, do you know what the black uh, median uh, net worth is right now? It's less than $1,700 as a collective. The white median net worth is more than $100,000. So, I mean, that's just a fact. So there's a lot of work that must be done. And uh, anybody that wants to uh, to jump on board with this, if you feel like you can help, my number is 228-281-9126. You got to be patient because putting this stuff together doesn't happen overnight. But we're going to get a group of people together, a body of people, and we're going to come to a common consensus of what we need to do and what we're going to do. And we're going to make something happen. Thank you, David. I appreciate you for coming by and sharing your information and keep us posted so we can share that information about um, the community collective when you reach out to um, young people to mentor them and to speak about um, all of the things that you've said earlier. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. May God bless God and protect you and everybody that watches this video. Please like this video, share this video, comment, like the uh, the like the, uh, the, the the overflowing oil page, share the page. Katrina is doing a real good thing. This is how you change the world. We have a we have a platform that you can use, you know, to change the world. Do something positive. This is how you do it. Yeah. Get the word out. It's free. Yes. It's free. Yes. <laughs>
man hold up. <laughs> God is good, right? I was going to say that. I was going to use your word, man, hold up. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thank you thank so you. much. You're an thank awesome you. friend. You have a blessed evening, and thank you. Can't thank you enough. You're an awesome friend, and thank you. God bless you. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye. Peace. Uh-huh.